Nerd On the Podcast is proudly partnered with Apogee Electronics and Odyssey Headphones, leaders in the field of audio. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Nerd On the Podcast you didn't need, but you deserve. Where all levels of nerd are welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Well, we are coming back to another episode of Nerds Explain the Film Industry. Uh, and we have we brought a guest. We brought we brought someone to bring their their expertise, Mr. Jeff Nimoy here. Hey, yeah, Jeff Jeff familiar Nimoy. voice. Yes. Thank you guys. Great to be back as always. Welcome home. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff's been on uh, on this podcast for multiple episodes discussing multiple things he worked on. But today we are going to go deep dive into the craft Ooh. and talk about some things that potentially you don't get to talk about a lot. Um, and this installment of Nerds Explained the Film Industry is with directing with Jeff Nimoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really great for me not to talk about anime constantly, about characters I've played, and, you know, uh, just to talk about the actual business. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's nice for a change. Yeah. <laughs> I I it. That's, uh, that's part of why we try to do these kind of things. It's just like, we want to have something you're not going to hear somewhere else. And, absolutely. And, and keep, it, keep it fun. Um, yeah. But let's not get too far into it. We have to introduce, introduce the host. My name is Tom. I'm Corey. And I'm Josh. And this episode is brought to you in part by the members of the Nerd On Nation. That's powered by Patreon. Patreon. As a member of the Nerd On Nation, you do get fun perks. Like you get early access to these episodes. You mm -hmm. get bonus episodes that nobody else hears. That's right. You get access to secret channels on our super public Discord Discount server. Discount on merch. Discount on merch uh -huh. like this mug that's in the store. Heck yeah, check it out. Uh, there's a lot that goes with it. A lot that, including a community that's amazing that is... The Discord servers that are for the Nerd On Nation, it's fun to, because you can actually have personal conversations that we've seen going on over there, and it's mm -hmm. it's really cool. So check it out. And you get to support us at the same time. We get to keep the lights on, <laughs> keep creating content, and to do this as much as How we much get time? to. Four quarters, baby. There it is. Four quarters. So, yeah. And I need a place to keep coming to do my podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. You're, uh, That's right. <laughs> Jeff Nimoy's Nerd on the Podcast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that actually had a really good ring to it. Uh -oh. uh, so check it out, nerdon.tv backslash Patreon. And do check out that Discord, nerdon.tv backslash Discord. And a huge shout out to Apogee, Odyssey, and Embody Audi Audi Audio. Oh, Thank yeah. <laughs> You got me. We well, really do that together. To well, be no, fair, so. the last three times you said embody audio, and then I jumped in, and you, you just threw me a curveball. I'm here now. Embody <laughs> audio, 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 audio. Appreciate you. Yeah, got you. And one last thing. If you like what you hear or see today, make sure to stop by, rate, review, share us with your friends and family. That is legitimately how we grow. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's the housekeeping. Let's get on to this. Nimoy of an episode? Yeah, all right. There <laughs> it that is. work? Yeah. No, we're right. gonna go more get on to Nimoy's episode. Because yeah, <laughs> he owns us now. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Conglomerate. Uh, so I, I kind of want to just deep dive and go right into it and uh, say and ask, you know, so you've directed films, feature, feature films, yeah. TV shows, animated, anime. Uh, you have so much experience under the belt. I kind of want to ask where did you kind of want, realize, like, I want to direct? Oh, early on, like elementary school early on. Okay, was it a uh, film or? It was stage oh. at first. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, I remember doing my sixth grade play, and I just sort of took over, you know, just naturally. It wasn't something I said I'm going to do, and people just looked at me, and. I think that kind of happens when you're a natural leader. It just kind of. Maybe. And the ideas I, use, I, I put out there, the teacher, uh, you know, used. In fact, the whole idea of that play, it was called, we were studying Greece. And we had to do a play about Greek mythology. And I said, it was 1978, 79. Mm -hmm. And the movie Greece was out. And I said, hey, let's call it Greece, spelled like the country. Right. And just... Do it like 50s, because 50s was way in at that time with oh, yeah. Happy Days and American Graffiti. Mm. And I said, let's just make it Greece, and we'll do it 50s, but we'll two gangs. You know, the Troys versus the Greeks. Oh. Right. And uh, we did That's it. actually quite brilliant. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Vision. Visionary. <laughs> and uh, it sort of snowballed from there. Every school play, sort of, it was just that sort of thing. And... Um, it, wherever, you know, if I was a cast member on something, again, like I'd throw an idea out and people would gravitate towards me to do things. So when I, um, when I became uh, an actor, 
uh, I went to NYU and in 88, I graduated and I came out here and I thought acting would be my lead into show business. And then I'll, I can direct. If I become a big enough actor, they'll have to let me write. Clint that. Eastwood. Right. right. Yeah. Um, so that was my actual plan. I, I mean, direct. I, I love acting, but it's the least thing I love be, between producing, directing, and writing. Mm-hmm. You know? It's the least favorite over the most favorites. Yes, yeah. right. Directing is my number one. Mm-hmm. Producing is my number two. Writing, writing is the most fulfilling of them all, but it's the hardest. Right. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I'm kind of, you know, I have a love. A lot hate. of strange uh, self reflection with writing. <laughs> yeah, I, right. You got a, a lot of crises going on until the script is turned <laughs> exactly. in. Exactly, and then also, you know, if you're writing um, something like Famish, for instance, I'm putting my soul right. on, on there so everyone can see what's it's going on more, in my life. It's a lot more personal. It's personal, it's, right? It's not directly about you, but it's some experiences right. that you and have even, had. And even if it's. Uh, not about me at all, you know, a movie, uh, you're still using your personal experiences to yeah. uh, develop the relationships yeah. between the characters. And we things. actually just talked about that on a recent episode. We talked about, like, write what you know doesn't necessarily mean, like, write your life. No. But write from what you you experience. Exactly. And it can be anything, but you're writing from that piece of you. Right. That- so when the, when the human characters um, respond in a human behavior way, it's mm-hmm. your behavior they're responding right. as. Because yeah. you don't have anything else to draw on. Exactly. <laughs> People will know. People will know. Right. Um, so you, so you, so you moved out here for acting. Yeah. Uh, and then how how did it snowball to to directing? Uh, well, I was an actor on uh, little anime things here and there, and then I pitched a show to Fox Kids, and there was no money in the budget for uh, the pilot for direct hiring a director, and I had been directed so many times before that in voiceover, and I just thought, you know, I can do this. This is not something sure. <laughs> I need to shy away from. And uh, I kind of never stopped after that, you know. And then other people start producers started hiring me and things like that. So um, that's how ultimately I got um, Digimon. I was doing these NFL films uh, pieces that. That's what I won the Emmy for, these comedy pieces. And uh, I was writing and directing and producing those. And Fox Kids was like, we've got all this anime, all this material from Japan. Can you change around what they're saying and make them a lot funnier and things like that? And I just started voice, you know, voice directing that as Mm -hmm. well. And uh, once Digimon took off, there was no turning back. It was such Mm -hmm. a big runaway hit. Right. That's what everyone wanted to um, hire you for after that. So I became a voice director, a professional voice director, even though I wanted to be a professional film director. Right. Yeah. That so. started with stage directing. <clears throat> Such like, right. a, what a like, <laughs> <laughs> journey you took to get there. It's exactly. like the e-god of directing. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, um, so, you know, you with NFL films, you so you wrote and produced and directed. Yeah. Um, and you naturally kind of had this inclination to direct. How did that later on feed into the writing and producing? I feel like when you have the experience of directing, like, oh, I yeah. know what I'm going to be doing. Like, does that later, how's that conversation between the producer you and the writer you? Right. Well, you know, when you're doing everything for the director, everything serves the director in everything. So you know what, you, what you're going to need as a director. So you start just feeding that. You know, and a lot of actors in the booth might get like uh, upset. They might say like, hey, can I get another take? I didn't like that. And I'm like, I- I'm looking at this whole picture. They're just looking at their performance. I'm like, there's music I'm not here. seeing this one take. I'm seeing the recording session that we had last week with the character that's with you in this scene I'm seeing, or whatever. I'm also, seeing, I'm also seeing the music, the sound effects. You know, I'm seeing the whole picture. And uh, I know like sometimes like, you know, oh, I've got hair everywhere. Uh, <laughs> Luscious and long. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just know that um, sometimes it just won't be heard. <laughs> too, we need sure. to we need to record it, but no one's going to be focusing on it. You know, uh, and other times I know there's going to be this huge music crescendo here, and I need you to match that drama as well. So you know, it goes both ways. Um, so. So that's what it is. You just keep feeding into what you know you're going to need as a director. And also, you know, the, a big part of directing is going to be later on in the editing room. So you know what the editor needs as well. So you're feeding that. You know, you need coverage in a film, for instance. Coverage it's is... It's the just-in-case mentality. Tom and I just looked at each other for that. <laughs> well, I always think of... It's, kind of me. It's, it's drunk director looking out for sober editor. 
Sure. Yeah. You know, you're like, you got to look out for yourself. You're like, oh man. I will say, just to sidetrack real quick, because yeah. I'm an editor and what we, we produce things together, comedy shorts and stuff like that. And and I do approach those things with it. Like, what am I going to need later kind of thing. And Tom is so gracious to know. Like, he, he's the same in, in, in the same as you, where he, he'll turn to me and he go, do you have what you need for that? And right. I go, yeah, I'm good. And then we'll, or I'll say, no, I just need this one thing. He goes, okay, we're going to get this for Corey and then we're going to move on. And right. it, it is a huge help to, to kind of you know, much like you came from your acting background, like using this knowledge and applying that to your, your directing, you found that I'm sure that this has made you an even better director. Much you're, better, yeah. You're not looking at it through just the lens of the director. You right. have all these other pieces. And let's take, for instance, um, coverage, for instance. So coverage, um, for those who don't know, is there's a main shot of, like, let's take a 60 Minutes interview is perfect for coverage. They're, they're talking, the interviewer has a camera on them, the, the interviewee has a camera on them, and then there's a master shot of the two of them. Master shot's typically the widest. Right. Yeah. We yeah. have a three-camera setup right now. Exactly, yeah. right. Master, Tom, yeah. uh, Corey. A and so, B. Huh? A and B, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. So, so then, um, so when you want to chop up the master... Unless you have something to cut to, you can't. So you have to have what's called coverage. You have to cut to that nodding <laughs> interviewer who's not saying anything, yeah. just nodding their head. Yeah. Right. And Say, you they're actively listening. <laughs> we, had to, we have to cut out this three-minute segment where someone had to go get a water bottle real quick. Right. So we're going to cut to him nodding, and then we'll get back to the interview. Exactly. And on uh, going back to Famish as an example, since it's the only live-action film I've, I've done. Um, so far. So far. I was talking to Tom about Famish too. I've got mm. it all ready to go. We're here for it. <laughs> uh, NDA, I can't say anything. <laughs> what? NDA, I can't say anything. Can't say anything. <laughs> well, you're in. Don't worry about you. You're part of the Team Nimoy. <laughs> Always on my way. <laughs> <laughs> so in Famish, for instance, uh, because it was such a fast shoot as well, and I didn't want it to look like a really cheap... Um, I mean, it was cheap. You wanted I, to preserve the production value. Yeah, I didn't want it to look like a cheap independent micro-budget film. I wanted it to look like a real movie. And the way to do that is coverage. And so I had two cameras going at all times. So the first, the master might be one, one shot. And at the same time we shoot the scene, I'll have close up on you if it's you and me. And I'm talking to Tom right now. Hi. And and um, and then on the next take, uh, if I like the master, I'll... Kill the master and do a second master or whatever. You know, yeah, I have my another over the shoulder. Or whatever something, it yeah. is, I have my options. And then, you know, that scene took us, you know, maybe an hour to film. And it's only going to take up maybe twenty seconds of footage in the whole movie. But um, there's four shots in it. You yeah. know, all from four different cameras. And people look at that and like, wow, that must have taken a whole day just to do that one thing. Oh, I yeah. did it in an hour because I'm shooting two cameras simultaneously. But you're getting not, like one to two takes for each of these. That's it. One or two <laughs> takes. Amazing I was to me. Move, one or two takes I was moving on if I got it. And that's, I should let everyone know, that's not ideal. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an ideal way of filmmaking. Yeah. But I had no money and I had six days because the convention was live when we filmed there. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Famish is a romantic comedy that takes place at a live anime convention where we shot. Yeah. a live anime convention. So we had six days to get 80% of the movie. Mm -hmm. So we had to, we had no options. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, I'm, I, I want to open obviously to more questions, but the, the, something people don't know about directing and you can kind of speak to this. A lot of people romanticize it as about, you know, the, the stereotypical parts about directing where you're working with actors and you're working through your scene, but like 80% of directing is just problem solving. Well, Yes. 80% is probably a lot, but a large part of it is, is problem solving on the fly. And, and Problem solving is a part of everyone's job, really, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. Mostly producers, like that, that is the number one job description of a producer, right, right, any right, producer, right. solving a problems. Good but that they know. Like, even, even if their job is to get money, it's still solving problems on how to get yes. money. Yes, gain the location. <laughs> Whatever their job is, so problem solving is it. For a director, I would say 90% of it is budgeting, mm -hmm. time, and the money you have to deal with. So it's, a lot of it is just management. Right. So if That's I- That's a better word. Yeah, yeah, management. Yeah, if I know I only have a day to get this whole stuff, right? And I'm like knocking myself out with four takes. I still haven't gotten what I want. You know, David Fincher does 80 takes, but he's got a lot of money to do it. He, yeah. You know, Kubrick- <laughs> 
<laughs> shot for four yeah. years. You yeah, know? right. <laughs> These guys have the money to do it. If I only have an hour or a day, whatever that timeline is, um, I've got to keep all these things in mind. And if I have an AD, an assistant director, they'll remind me, hey, one hour to lunch, the crew has got a break, whatever it is. Um, but if I'm like on Famous, I was my own AD. I had to keep, <laughs> keep all that in my head. Um, hey, other Jeff. It's almost lunch. <laughs> <laughs> he wears a lot of hats in the same day. Um, so anyway, um, that's the way it, it it works out. Mm -hmm. It's mostly management. Same comes to voice acting. So voice acting, I've got two hours to record Steve Bloom, for instance, in Ultraman. I've only got two hours. I'm saying this as, as a perfect example because right. I, I screwed this one up and uh, put Ooh. put more money in Steve's pocket than he needed. But <laughs> <laughs> sure, he's happy. <laughs> um, so I thought for some reason that his character had a lot more going on in the series than it did. Uh, and I just made a mistake, a mental mistake. And I thought I only had like four more lines to record him in that whole episode. And I didn't realize it. So I said, ah, we'll get you next time, Steve. Let's end here with only four lines left. <laughs> oh. And, and I thought like he had another two hours and he didn't, but we had to pay him for another two hours. Right, because there's the minimum, right, right? Exactly. And I just felt terrible about that. Um, but most of the time I'm on it, you right. know? So the actors are in the green room or the waiting room and you're, you know, you get the two hours and then it's like a dentist's office. You go out and go, all right, next patient, the, other dog, the, <laughs> the dentist will see you now. And the, the actor comes in and then again, you know, and I know all of these things I've got. One o'clock, I've got to break the engineers, you know? I've only got this much, you know, to do. If I if I don't get it, we've got to pay him again, you know, or her, whatever the case is. So it's time and money management, a lot of it. And that's why casting is so crucial. Mm -hmm. If you get the right cast, 90% of your work is done for you already. Sure. You know, like... I don't have to really direct Bloom that much, you know? Not only do we have a shorthand because we work together so right. much, but he's great. They get they get the character. They get, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, Famish is the same exact thing, you know? If I get the right cast, you don't have to direct them. They're already in that character. Right. They already know it. And I don't have to say, you're not really giving me what I want here. Right. They understood the story as a whole as well. Which yeah, is, exactly. Which is and, and we rehearsed. Yeah. I made sure we rehearsed coming from my stage background. There it is. <laughs> all coming, I'm telling you, man. They're all just like, it's like a tool belt, really. Like all these yeah. other things you've done is, is right. a tool belt for directing. But I also knew we only had so much time and I'm like, if I only have two takes here, you we know, time be... for two takes. We need to have our lines memorized, yep. right? So oh, it yeah. seems like it comes down to like uh, when I was in acting school, they made you take like tech classes and stuff like that. It kind of seems like you have a so that you understood the whole process of right. what goes into a play and all that kind of stuff. Yes, uh, it kind of sounds like you have a good appreciation and grasp yeah. on like I'm not Each just directing process. what's going on mm -hmm. in the frame and what my actors are doing I'm also seeing the post-production and even maybe yeah. even past that and freshman year at NYU they made us do that too they called it a crew requirement mm -hmm. you had to join some crew on some production main stage production at NYU before you can get cast in anything yeah yeah yeah, my wife did that at Northridge. Yeah, so uh, I ran lights for this move for this one play, and I did running crew, which actually, you know, while the play's going on, you put you know furniture, you strike, oh, yeah. and yeah, you know. we had to do um, we had to design lights for an active production, even if you were in it. You mm -hmm. had to do like scene um, scenic design. You had to do everything, costumes. Yeah. You had to experience all of the different jobs right. that went into one production, even if you were in it, which right. I really enjoyed because you're like, oh, I see. So you're not one of those, which I'm sure we might have all experienced, one of those actors like, like I don't have to do that. I'm you're like, oh, but it's all part of the process. It's all I didn't important. I didn't experience a, an actor like that. I experienced a director who was like that. Oh, really? He was like, I don't have to carry a flag because that's not what artists do. And I was like, I hate you. Well, there, you are, there are people I'll, out there. Yeah. I'll tell you, my good friend Mandy Fabian, who Josh is going to work on her first feature. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, she and I had a conversation. She said, I, am, I realized after this movie, I am such an actor's director. And I'm like, if I never have to talk to the actor, to me, that's a success. <laughs> <laughs> if I never have to give them a, a note, like, let them. What does that mean, being an actor's director? Meaning she's 
always talking to the actors about what's going on and like mm. breaking down the scene and like, right. motivation. Right. And- you know, but I've heard so many interviews with great actors. Morgan Freeman is the, the one that comes to mind where you ask him, uh, what's the one thing you want from a director? And he goes, leave me alone, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and I, I, I heard this interview uh, with Michael Caine. Um, he was talking about being directed by John Huston, the great film director, Maltese Falcon, mm-hmm. many, many things. The Man Who Would Be King was the movie uh, that they were talking about there. And uh, Michael Caine was like on the movie for two months and he never got a note from John Huston. And finally, he was so nervous, he went over to John Huston and he said, John, am I giving you what you need? And Huston looked at him and said, Michael, you're getting paid an awful lot of money to do what you do. I suggest you keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I dig that. I dig that. And that's kind of what I'm doing, what I like to do. I like to, you know, unless I... You brought him on for a reason. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe I had to tell Brian Donovan once in the uh, in, in, in Famish, there was a scene where he was stepping on Nikki's joke and I said, you need to give me a beat. I think that's the only direction I gave Brian Donovan the whole time. In rehearsal, I gave him a few, but... Sure. But in the filming, you know, and that's the way I love Rehearsals it. Yeah. for that. That's it's barely to, a note. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's wonderful. It's more like an edit. It's like, yeah. we need that for the yeah. end. Yeah. I need you to just wait. Don't step on her joke. <laughs> yeah. um, just going on to that a little bit more like of craft of live action filmmaking. Like when I feel like there, how, how do you d- differentiate between decisions of like, where am I going to put the camera here? Yeah. Am I going to have it move? I'm going to keep this one entire wide. I know with yeah. Famous, it's definitely like you're fighting against the clock, but yeah. the editorials of like, oh, I want this to be a lower angle right. or a higher angle. Okay, so a lot of directors do storyboards first, which is a comic book. It's the movie in a comic book form, which kind yeah. of what is what a movie is anyway. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's, it's motion one, pictures. It's a frame, right. And um, so I don't like that. Personally, because, uh, again, you know, when you're a director or a writer or an actor, you've got to immerse yourself in the world of famous directors, writers. And, sure. Study, and study the masters. Right. In fact, I did. Before Famous, I studied, I, I did all the directors on uh, Masterclass. Oh, same. High five. And, hey. <laughs> and all the actors yeah. on Masterclass. Oh, okay. Um, just to see. And I'm finishing up the Ron Howard one right now. I, I, I love like it. that one. Yeah. I love it. And what was very comforting was I'm on the right track because these are the things I know I'm going to do. Sure. And, um, and I read a book by uh, Kazan, mm-hmm. uh, Elia Kazan who directed um, On the Waterfront, among many, many other things. Um, And he said he doesn't like to storyboard because he, if you're on a location, if you're on a set, that's one thing. But if you're on a location, you have to walk that location. You got to look at it. You got to see what's going on. You know, you you get more ideas as you're there. Again, famous, there was a fountain. I didn't know there was a fountain there. So I'm like, we've got- Until you got there, yeah. Right. And then the elevator, there's a glass elevator. You know, I knew there was a glass elevator, but uh, when we got there, we're like, can we stand on here? Would would that look good? You know, so you got to test things out when you get to the location. That's more my style. But a lot of directors swear by storyboarding. To me, it's an extra step not really needed because you still might change things around. Right. right? So I skip it because I can't draw. But, um, <laughs> uh, I, I think, I think like, Nolan, yeah, it's not necessary, but the yeah. truth is I just have shitty. I think writing. Nolan doesn't use storyboards. I think when, he, when he's had to use it, it's obviously again, we yeah. have to work with like executives who have to approve everything Right. But on location. He's like, I'm just next to the camera. Yeah. So. Right. So, you know, it was also tough because I was in 80% of the movie as well. So it was hard. <laughs> yeah, but, that's right. So I had a stand in. John Fawn was my stand in uh, during everything. And I would look through the camera. And, and uh, you know, a lot of times also the cinematographer, who is your right hand, director of photographer, cinematographer, they're the same exact job, director of photography and cinematographer. So it just depends what they like to be called. Um, so uh, they're your right hand. and. When you're voice directing, your sound engineer is your right hand or left hand. <laughs> um, so they could have an idea too. Many times they will, and it'll be better than yours. And as a director, the one thing you really have to be is flexible. You have mm-hmm. to go with the best idea wins. It's a yes and. Yeah, exactly, which I come from an improv background as well. So you need, you need to be flexible. You can't be like, no, 
I want this shot and nobody else could tell me <laughs> otherwise it works. I'll make it work. Unless you have a bajillion dollars. <laughs> right. Then you can try it. Yeah. But, then you, you know, if they go, <laughs> you know, I, a poor, poor actress on uh, Famous, uh, I cast a lot of people from a improv group in uh, Milwaukee huh. or Madison, Wisconsin. Um, some were from Milwaukee, drove, made the drive over. But uh, she got cut out because right after we filmed the scene, the cinematographer said, you know, I have an idea for a, a shot here. And it was the same information in both scenes. Oh. And, and his yeah. scene was much more cinema- cinematic. It was filled the screen. There was a lot more going on. Fit the story. Uh, right. Yeah. Poor actress got cut. So. Mm. It, happens. Yeah. it happens. Yeah. It happens. It happens to floor. big actors too. <laughs> yeah. All the time I hear about it. They're like, yeah, I was in that, but uh, I got cut. So <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Many friends who've been cut out of like big superhero movies. And yeah. Like, so, I'm, that sucks. Uh, <laughs> um, I do. I, I think, you know, we talked, you, you mentioned it, like studying the greats and stuff like that. You know, and you talked about like directing coming, coming naturally for you. Like, was there... Um, directors that really inspired you? Oh, you yeah, in? absolutely. Well, as a writer-director, um, Woody Allen was my number one. I know his name is now Taboo. We mm-hmm. can't even say it out loud, but you got to give it to him. He's, he's, he's a great director. If we're here just to separate the art from artists and right, technical, the artist, the tech, on a technical right. term, yeah. He, what, he, right. I think we could say it. It's not like he's going to come out the mirror and kill Like, is it Candyman now? No. <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I, meant. I heard my name three times <laughs> in the mirror and back. That's terrifying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are you? What are you? Uh, so, <laughs> so Woody, and then... Do you have any daughters? No. <laughs> no. There it is. Uh, Nimoy's across the line. <laughs> All right. So, um, so Woody Allen was my number one. Yeah. Writer, director. Writer, director. Um, but as a director, you know, he always has this. He uses masters a lot, mm-hmm. which in Famish I had to. But then he moves the camera yeah. a lot with his master. Hands, yeah. yeah. Scorsese. I love Scorsese. Um, I love Tarantino is now one of my favorites, Mm -hmm. you know, ever since I saw his first film. I'm a Tarantino nut. It was funny when you're talking about uh, different actors and, you know, saying like, don't talk to me. Uh, I think uh, my favorite that I I go off of is Christoph Waltz. And Mm. he said that he's like, what the best thing a director or writer can do is just build you a frame. Yeah. And if I live in the frame and you don't see anything, then that's fine. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So if I draw it as best I can, then it's like, cool, then I I don't talk to you no more. Yeah. Reminds me of that interview he was had. He had this interview where this lady was trying to do some gotcha Thing about Kill Bill and she was like well you know I think the kids who see violent go, look it's a rated R movie if parents take their kids to see my violent movies it's not my fault and she's like but why is there so much she goes because it's fun it's a, it's a movie and I just I've never gotten that out it's so because it's so much fun Jan yeah. and I just I love him for it I'm just like respect I respect that but Tarantino's fun. a great one yeah sometimes that is the answer yeah. you know it doesn't make sense sometimes uh I think Nikki Boyer once said to me, why is she doing this? Uh, And I went, because it's a movie? Yeah. She was like, that's not an ad. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't it though? (laughs) So so it sounds like, so two writer-directors so far. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, as he doesn't write, but yeah. Yeah. But yes, I do love to go to the writer-directors more, you know, uh, because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you're writing, again, you're writing something for you to direct. So, you know, you're already building your strong points in. You right, know? right, right, right. <laughs> Setting yourself up for a home run. You're like, ah, exactly. You're going to send this one right down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, there's so many of the old ones too. John Ford and, yeah. and John Houston, like I said. Mm-hmm. Uh, many William Wyler. Just, uh, yeah, I'm Ron Howard. Uh I'm engrossed when you when you're when you want to be in the film industry. You've got to watch every movie ever made. That's why they're tax write offs. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's, good and bad. Yeah, that's a, that's the thing where it's like if you want to be a good filmmaker, you got to be a good film watcher. Right. Yeah. And and I learned this from Scorsese. Scorsese. He uh, before he starts any film, he'll watch twenty films that are like the film he's about to make. Oh yeah, invoke the same emotion. Right, right? Yeah. exactly. So for Famish, the number one film that I would say in, was the inspiration was Arthur. Mm. Um, Arthur oh. was, yeah, Arthur was a romantic comedy. Yeah. Kind of silly in a way of, you know, just laugh out loud funny, but we're talking about this <laughs> Alcoholic, yeah. You know? For those of you listening, not the Russell Brand one, right? Right, the right. Dudley Moore, the Dudley Moore, the good one, right? So, <laughs> so, we're, and you know, his, the guy dies of cancer. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of serious stuff in the movie, but it's told in a very light commercial. It's way. Handled well, 
Yeah, and that's how I wanted to deal with Famish. Here's this guy, he's, you know, on the brink of uh, suicide, mm-hmm. and he's a uh, ex-drunk, and he's a pill popper, and he's uh, <laughs> going after girls who are young, and... Uh, it's just a very fun, uplifting movie. <laughs> but at the same time, we're going to have some fun here. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. We can all laugh. It's okay. You want to let the audience know. You're like, it's okay to laugh right. too. So that was the style I was yeah. going for. Right. That was the style I was going for. So Arthur is one of them. There's a long list of sure. movies. Up in the Air was another one. Mm. That oh, wow. It was very sort of- uh, I see that. Yeah, very prevalent in, uh, in my- planning and staging of mm-hmm. and the, the 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 tone of famish as well so things like that you've got to watch uh, it's really the only way to learn and sometimes you learn more from a bad movie than you learn from a good movie you learn not to do things you know yeah. certain things you well know? you learn a little bit more of your your style as well and your craft because yeah. you're like i don't like this i don't like that and right. like i know i'm figuring out do why that. you don't like them too yeah. and then yeah. it's like i feel like i'm cheated out of this or i feel like they they rush that instead like we can do it this way instead. yeah mm-hmm. right yeah. But I would say if I did have a style, that's it. Very serious subject matter told in a light, funny, commercial way. Yeah. I we're, feel, all, we're all human. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? um, but and then I think, you know, again, there's there's such this transition between, you know, TV, IP directing, and then mm-hmm. also directing something of your own. Because, you know, when you're directing something like Ultraman, you don't, you know, you're the director, so you're getting the performances, but also you do have to answer to some other people above. So Absolutely. I, I want to Digimon even more. Yeah. I don't yeah. I want to hear a little bit of like kind of those things that I think a lot of people kind of shy away from those conversations of mm-hmm. like sometimes you have great collaborators who you have to respond to. Sometimes you have to do the last minute audible and make like, okay, cool, we have to change the stuff. I it's getting yeah. on top. Yeah. Collaboration is the number one word, really, when you're dealing with any of these things, but especially filmmaking. If you've got 40 people in your cast and crew. Each one of them is as valuable as everyone else, including the director, producer, writer, you know? So it, it's just a collaboration. And Lex Lang, I always say, is like the ultimate collaborator because like during, we had to do the scene in <laughs> at this convention center and there was another convention going on in the bar scene mm-hmm. when uh, Lex mm-hmm. chases me yeah, down, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right? So there was a whole like, a whole group of insurance sales people or something. Oh, wow. And I mean, the room was packed <laughs> with people. And Lex goes over and starts warming up the crowd. He's like, hey, everybody, I'm Lex Lang. I'm a voice Whoa. actor. And they didn't know what. They're not in show business. Right. Yeah. Also, we're in Madison, Wisconsin. They're yeah. not expecting a movie to be filmed around them. Right. And Lex is like, yeah, you might hear some yelling. You might hear some fighting. It's all fun. It's all show business. Don't worry about anything. Oh, so he just went in and smoothed the whole it's thing out. Fantastic, right. He, but he, he, did he all- location managed for yes, a and then we're doing a shot in the pool, and he's supposed to chase me into the pool area, and I'm hiding, and uh, I hide by jumping in the pool. And he said, "Hey, I have an idea. What if when I ask this kid, who's the Wolfwood cosplayer, yeah, when I ask this kid um, where Nimoy went, uh, maybe he asked for my autograph, and I, mm-hmm. I signed his <laughs> autograph. And I'm like, Lex, there's no time. We've I've got this pool. Like, <laughs> yeah." As soon as a guest comes in that pool, I'm done. I have to shut down. I can't shut the pool down. <laughs> right. So, so I'm like, I've got the pool to myself. Don't, you know. He's like, I'll just take 10 minutes to go upstairs and get a shop. I'm like, yes. Aww. And he goes upstairs. And sure enough, some guy with his two kids come in. And they're splashing around. And the guy's like, you could you could film around us. I'm like, no, I can't. You're splashing like crazy. Yeah. Jo- Josh wouldn't have any no <laughs> anything to mix. <laughs> oh no. So so I was so mad at Lex. I said, Lex, <laughs> I just pulled out petty cash. I I gave him sixty bucks. I said, offer him twenty. <laughs> if he doesn't take twenty, <laughs> offer him forty. I said, but you have to do it because you have you, to get him out of the pool. you waited. But it was a funny joke. The joke worked. It works. The guy took 60 bucks to leave. Uh, <laughs> he said, oh, I'll buy my, my kids some ice cream. And Lex is like, he's not buying his kids anything. He's no. pocketing that money. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Oh, but man. the joke worked. It did. You know, it so. Did. It's funny because uh, almost in all of these episodes that we've done of Nerds Explain, uh, collaboration comes up every single yeah. time. You have how to. How important it is in, in a creative the whole field, process. You yeah. have to. Because you're also surrounding yourself with people who want to be creative and you know, especially as a director, since you're steering the ship, you have to be fully aware of yeah. that. Like everyone here today right. is a creative type person. And we all love the reason we're here is because we, we love to collaborate. We're on a team of 40 people because we like 
working with people in this regard. Well, I mean, even then, I think there's this weird romanticization of like, I, I was talking about it with Will in the last one of just like, one person gets all this credit for some reason and like the village kind of gets discounted. Right. Yeah. And like, you know, a lot of people love the sexy words of like, oh, I, I isolated myself in a cabin. I wrote this thing, blah, blah, blah. I'm a great writer. Or it's like, oh, I'm a director and I have this great vision. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. But it's like, Collaboration had to come involved somewhere. Some compromises had to made, yeah. may, be made. And as a director who's managing and juggling so many things, there are battles you are fighting every day and you are just a survivor yeah. of that fight. And, <laughs> yeah. and again, I'm not worried about Lex's joke. I'm worried about the room, the location. I've got we so get many the next things shot going set up. on. Right. It was the only shot that we, uh, the only scene where we used lights. Uh, oh, we, wow. we had, you know, we, we, that takes a while to yeah, set up lights. Yeah, it does. So it just took a while and, uh, you know. It's all the puzzle pieces. I, I want to talk to you about this a little more please? since we're on this. Yeah, please. About me getting mad, you know, yeah. while we're going. So when I used to, when I'm working, I'm in a zone, mm -hmm. right? And I'm just locked in and I'm not really worried about my behavior towards other people. <laughs> It's like it's like to me. It's like parent in the kitchen cooking. Leave Correct. me alone. So so, my writers on Digimon, if they had a question while I was working, they used to call me and they'd say calling me with a question while I was directing was like calling daddy at work. That's what they used to say. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh, I hate having to call him because he's just gonna. I don't. I'm not saying what the fuck are you calling me about? I, but I'm just you're just like go go I'm go. I'm short. Go. I'm well, short. there's a mentality like a, I know, time I'm, is money. Some of my theater uh, yeah. directors that I can think of like there are when they're in director mode, right? And then when they're out of the theater, right? There is not to say that they're two faced by by any means. It's like a work thing that you kind of get into this mode yes. of like he's not an asshole. I swear. Right. There is He's a difference. He's just in a mode right, right. now. There is a difference. I've worked on some projects where people are just asking from the get-go, and some, I'm like, this sucks, man. One this time, man. I'm so sorry. Jesus. But, but you like, too? Like, I, hate it. I can't deal with that. Kate Higgins used to do a great impersonation of me. I'm sure she can still do it. I just haven't directed her in years. But she used to do this great impersonation of me during a break, talking, laughing. <laughs> and then when it comes time to work, she goes, okay, let's get back to work. <laughs> That's me. I, I go from, you know. Oh, Jekyll and Going uh, right, I go from jovial Jeff to let's go to work. Right. Let's go. And um, focused. Right. So I'm just short. And I had to, because I was aware of this through my writing staff at Digimon mm -hmm. and actors who've told me this, I made a big announcement during the pre production dinner we had in Madison for Famous. For Famous. Okay. And I made a big announcement. I said, if you can ask anyone else the answer to a question, do please, it. Please. <laughs> Besides me. I am self-aware right. enough to know. Right. <laughs> I am self-aware enough to know I'm the last person you should be asking unless I'm the only one who has the answer to this. And second, if I am short or curt with you or after a take, I'm like, God, you know, I'm not angry and I'm not upset with you. I'm not upset with anyone, really. Not even myself. <laughs> You'll, just find, me, I'm You'll just, find me 30 minutes later and we'll have a great we'll have night. a beer, right? <laughs> I'm wound up. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just like in that mode. For sure. Right? So, so I have been accused of that, justifiably. <laughs> um, but um, I make that announcement so they know going in. Why, what an asshole. Don't take it personal. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, this is, I mean, that's it's, it's part of the process. This yes. is like the, right. the and that's, that, that's the interesting thing too because I feel like directing you, you're also juggling some of those things, some ner some neuroses of other people and yeah. again, it, sometimes it comes down to the cast and you're like, if if I can handle that or if they can, they can kind of right. st stave things off or give you the expectation too. And you know, you do have some actors going back to Mandy Fabian saying she was an actor's director. If I have an actor who is having a meltdown of some sort, the human. I, it's gonna come yeah, out. I am going to, you know, talk to them because, again, I just want to solve that problem. Yeah. <laughs> solve <laughs> the, the problem. At the end of the day, you're the director. That's it. Let's yeah. solve that problem and move on. Move on. It's always about moving on. Yep. Next shot. Uh, so, there is a lot of that, too. And, you know, some actors in the booth have walked out on me. <laughs> um, yeah. Terry, I can't remember Terry's last name. But anyway, he was playing something on Digimon Data Squad. Pratchett. Terry, no, <laughs> and um, <laughs> Terry Stone, and uh, the last line, Terry and I get along very well. But the last line, he asked for another take, and I was like, "No, it's good." And he was like so upset, I didn't give him another take. Wow, you know, and you know, I sometimes I'll say, "What's it going to sound like? Do it for me now before the mic is rolling." <laughs> yeah. And they do it, and I go, "Okay," or "Nah," you know. So. 
But like at that at that point, that is on the actor to trust the director, right? That's right. that's supposed to be the give and take. If the director goes, "We got it," you go, "Okay, you okay. can ask for another take." And here's the Great. other thing. But if they say, "Who cares?" No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the actors care because that their actors are in a whole different. Right. They're in their mind, right. you know. But who cares if you got what you know what you wanted? It's again, you're serving the director. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's fi- about finding that balance. Of course, yeah. you want to try. If they, if you have the time, if you have the budget, you want to give someone another take. If it's going to make them feel good, great. And then yeah. we can move on and do the re- get the rest of the right, day. Right. But there are those situations where you go, I'm serious. We got it. We need to do the next thing. <laughs> uh, and that's a big part of, of, of for directing is differentiating between those moments as well. Yeah. But, uh, you know, again, Neil Kaplan asked me once, uh, what's my motivation here? And I was like, to get me to lunch by one o'clock. That's <laughs> boring. This is a business. You want to make art? I always tell them, you want to you want to make art? Do a play. Yeah. <laughs> this, oh, wow. This is a business. <laughs> I got, I, I'm, I'm budgeting time and money, you mm-hmm. know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I feel like, and that's a cool thing, I think, that... <clears throat> that's again, the cool thing? It's a cool thing because I feel like there is, again, a, a mystification sometimes that people are just like, you know, directors become these like part-time therapists. Mm-hmm. And like they have to kind of like... Oh, okay, I'm I'm, be, I'm here with you, and we're emotional. And sometimes, you know, there are there is that director who wants to do that stuff, but then some. At the end of the point, there are deadlines, there are schedules, there That's are it. things like that, and it's just like I I want to hold your hand, but I need you to you get you get paid to do this, <laughs> like and, and in certain sets and stuff like that, you can say that. <sighs> yeah. But then when you're on the indie world, it's just like, oh man, I, I maybe the casting yeah. could have been different, you know. And so, I really dislike working with non professionals, to tell you the truth, because they don't get that. They don't understand it. So when I'm doing some directing thing, like on Digimon and the casting director's girlfriend got a part, has never acted before, I'm like, this is not my job. Mm-hmm. I'm, this is not a teaching hospital. Right. You know, this room, the recording studio costs like, you know, $400 an hour. Right, Let's right, go. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 We got to do the thing. Right now. <laughs> and I, I mean, for their actors waiting in that green room, right? And, and yeah. I feel like, I, I mean, like, and this is like the interesting barrier that I tend to feel like I have on like a set where it's like, the only person that should be getting very angry is me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, if I see that you're kind of lashing out and you're having an yeah. upset moment, it's like, I'll talk to you and be like, hey, right. you know, like, and that's the thing, we've got to keep moving. Yeah. If you're taking time to have this emotional breakdown, then everyone's going to take this time to process that emotional breakdown. I can't have that. The sun's coming up. Yeah. Let's get <laughs> on with the fucking scene. <laughs> now, uh, now yeah. I will say great job. At the end, yes. <laughs> but during it, it's very rare for me to compliment you because I'm I'm not even worried about your feelings at that point. You know, I'm just doing this. I'm making sure I got what I got, what right. I need. Well, and and a lot of it is just they just want to feel like uh, uh, the best way to say this is they want to feel like they're in show business too. You know, you feed them. They want to feel like a star. Yeah, you feel them. You feed them, and that's. A lot for sometimes when, especially when you're like on Famous, when no one's getting paid, you know, you, you have to give them food or something. Right, Otherwise, yeah. they feel like, what the hell am I doing this for? Work anger <laughs> is different than hangry <laughs> anger. Right, 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 right. That's a very <laughs> hanger is dangerous. Hanger is very dangerous yeah. because it doesn't make like in the moment right. it doesn't make sense. But people love like perks, mm-hmm. you know, and the more perks you give them, uh, the more they feel like they're in show business a little right. bit. Trailers, you know. Per diem. Yeah, per mm-hmm. diem, exactly. All those things, you know. I mean, it goes to show just the, the over-enveloping kind of nature of being a director and having to think of, I'm not just, again, not just thinking about the shot. I'm thinking about food services. I'm thinking about right. how, I mean, not how are they feeling, but just like, you know, the well-being on the set in terms of like, making sure that they're fit, the environment. Thank you. It's like, it's a cohesive project Mm -hmm. and it's not just like, and I I don't want to give the idea that on Famous, everything was, you know, go, 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 chips and orange slices. I don't want to say a thing, it's (laughs) hugs and rainbows. It wasn't, you know, I'm sure they wanted to kill me at many times, you know, the cast. Uh, As Brian Donovan said, did you do 100%? No, (laughs) but (laughs) For this movie, you did 110%. Right. <laughs> for, for what this movie turned out to be, it was 110%. Right, right. But at the time, you know, you're not going to satisfy everyone or even mm-hmm. the majority of people. Yeah, right. <laughs> you just got to keep driving it. And that's the other thing you have to think of as director. You're one person and maybe 100 people are behind you. Crew, cast. In a movie, that's not micro-budget, you right. know got a lot of people working on this set. You know, a lot of 
cast, crew, everything. And you've got to will them to do what you want them to do, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, I don't want to call it manipulation because it's not quite, it's, it's not evil. It's, uh, it's, in, it's, uh, in, inspire. It's right. You have to inspire them. You have to move. You've just got to put your will on them mm -hmm. and get them to do what you want. And you know I, I, mean? I feel like there have, I, I've, I've talked to several crew members and it's, there's a very interesting dynamic of like, some people are like, Oh, I don't, I I'd rather like work harder for someone who sounds like they have like their vision pretty laid out. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm getting what they wanted yes. versus going, getting out early and not feeling like we actually tried. And that's a very interesting thing I've, I've heard before, mm -hmm. but like to your point of like, this is, you know, we're micro budget. We have six days. This is the story. And it's like, you know, again, the story of how famous is made is, is a story in yeah. itself and it should be a documentary <laughs> or something. But like, it, it's in a crazy, insane con rock star concert. And people are like, oh my God, I'm part of something. Right. And, like, and we're part of the band. Yeah. And we're, we're doing all these crazy things. And this is like a SWAT team mission. And like, right. we have this time we have to execute. And it gets exciting. It, yeah. it, and, and you're having it with other people. You're all in the foxhole and you're all like the gristles on the seat, side of the mouth. And you're like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we got it. Yesterday was a long day, but this one's going to be long. It is. It's uh, like a six day war mm -hmm. or whatever, yeah. you know. Again, surviving. But, you know, you mentioned something I want to go back to uh, yeah. about a director that does have an idea going in or mm -hmm. what have you. I meet so many editors who they say, oh, thank God. You know, this is so easy. You've got it all mapped out. You know what you want. Yeah. So many producers and directors come in and I go, what do you want? And they go, mm, I don't know. Let's see. Let's uh, play. And show me what you, you do a cut. The like, editor's oh, like, oh, great. Now I'm a producer. Yeah, not, yeah. Get, not getting paid Suddenly to be a I've producer. Suddenly I become a director as well. And I don't know what's happening. <laughs> and not getting paid. Yeah, no. Still getting the editor wage. I see Josh's brain collapse. I'm just no. I mean, I'm just thinking it from my side too, as um, from the post side of mm -hmm. like, you know, I we were talking to Will about some of the the minutia of post production and the organization of it and all the that nuance. kind of stuff. The nuance and like even talking about silly things like two pop and and you know it's like right, wow, it's so interesting that like it's not like common knowledge, you know, going into the process of any project, no matter where it is of like not knowing. Mm -hmm. And you're like, cause I, and part of the process that I have for my post-production anytime taking on a project is talking about, you know, what kind of previous ideas do you already have? Cause right. it's like, we're collaborating and it's like, I'm going to have my own ideas, but what are yours? Right. Like, is there a certain, like even a certain sound effect mm -hmm. that, uh -huh. that you want for this particular part or anything and it's like uh will talked about spotting sessions and that it, it exists with post-production for a film I'd, i usually meet with a director and we sit down and we watch it and it's like okay can we do that oh that dialogue's dirty or whatever and it's like it'd be interesting to so now that you're off set as a director like going into the post process like that's my favorite part okay because that's where you really build the story you put all the pieces together you, and there's not that pressure of production yeah. Production is the least favorite, <laughs> even though that's where it's all done. Right. It's just so stressful and you only have so much time to get. Micromanaging. And right. You just only have so much time to get what you want in this allotted time. Uh, but post, you could just relax. My my editor on the movie, Sam Malo, we call them the green label sessions because we bring over a bottle of green label, um, Johnny Walker green label scotch. <laughs> there you go. And uh, we went through four bottles editing. <laughs> editing, not one sitting. No, no, yeah, no. But we, we sure, call them, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we call no, them no. the green label sessions. We pour each other a drink and we start, you know, working. And, um, and it's just the most fun. It's just. You can actually see it coming. And you can play a little bit. You with, can play with, a little bit and talk about problem solving galore. You know, there's all <laughs> kinds of things going on. And it's, it's just, it's play rather than pressure, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think I skipped over a question, Tom, that you had before about all the people above me mm -hmm. on like a, a show mm. with a big IP like Digimon. Um, so, you know, you do get some pressure from above. It depends on... Who's above you? What their style is, you know? Like, I had a guy at Fox Kids, Clive Mazamudo, who uh, was like, you know, Jeff, you get paid to do what you do, do it, you know? Mm. And then... That's nice. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then 
season two, unfortunately, they assigned someone new, and I did not get along with this person. And we uh, we really clashed. And almost because I was like, well, I got us to this point in the show. Look how popular it is now. All of a sudden, you're questioning yeah. what I'm doing. But, uh, I, you know, mm. and a lot of times when a show becomes popular, everyone wants to take credit ownership. by laying their finger into the soup. I did this. Know? I did that. Yeah, their, right. their signature on it. But this guy was such an idiot. He, um, <laughs> he uh, I'm not going to mention his name, but there was a line. Just, you can say Tom. Tom wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> there was a line. Speaking of Ron Howard from uh, it, Apollo 13 was out at the time. And there was a Digimon scene where two astronauts are in space. This is season two. And they see a Digimon on the moon or something. <laughs> and they say, you know, and, and I said, this is perfect. Apollo, and I said, Houston, we have a problem. And the lawyers were like, well, I'm afraid this is this, this is that, you know. Mm. And I'm like, well, you know. The real astronaut said it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, I don't think it's copyrighted, but because Apollo 13, they were afraid. And this genius at Fox Kids said, no problem. He was from England. He said, we have a uh, train station in England that's pronounced Houston, but it's spelled different. We'll just spell it that way. I'm like, we're not spelling it on TV. We're not, <laughs> yeah, right. We're voicing it. We're just saying it. We're not yeah. going to be like, Houston, the train station in London, we have a problem. <laughs> Houston spelled with an X. <laughs> yeah. That's, wow. So, you know, well, some, but these are all the, the things that you have to consider. Like, it, yeah. there's a legal side of it. Oh, yes. Well, a lot of times, the you know, even with Famish, we had to have what's called clearance at the end, a clearance person looks at it and red flags all these things, like all of these characters, you know, have a girl wearing a Superman logo. Warner Brothers owns it clearly, but it's fair use. We're at a convention, you know? So we we had a lot of fair use. It's called fair use, the legal right. term. Um, but sometimes, you know, if someone's eating from a box of M&Ms, that's not fair use. You could have used any box. It didn't walk in front of you, you know? Right. <laughs> right yeah. You know? So um, you've got to, you know, the prop department art direction has to, you know, clear up. Greek it things. up. Greek right. It. Yeah. Um, a lot of times uh, I had people hold the bottle a certain way so the label, the logo wouldn't be on mm -hmm. camera. Yep. You know, things like that. I have a habit of taking the label off water bottles. There you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't, I just, okay. Um, right. Wow. So I'm just thinking like all of the considerations because you have yeah. to, like you, when does your job stop as a director? I mean, Famous is a little when bit the different. Starts. Other, <laughs> it's a little bit different because it's your baby. Your, right. I mean, well, that's it. Once the, uh, once it's done, done, you're done. And there's nothing more to do. The distributor has to take over. Uh, no one went to acting school <laughs> or directing school to learn about distribution. Yeah. No, <laughs> oh my no, God. weird. It's like you know, if schools taught about like healthcare, driving, and yeah. taxes, but it's like all, all all the art schools are like, how about the actual money side right. of it? Please? Well, then you have to hire other people. You have to hire a uh, sales agent, and the agent finds a distributor for you, and the piece of the pie keeps shrinking lower. Right, and lower right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I now own sixty-seven percent. Of 67% of Famish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you own 3% of I do. 67% of Famish. <laughs> I do. I really do. The back end points, baby. Uh, um, I do want to kind of like offer some nuggets for the, the audience and listeners uh, of specific lessons that you learned from the directors that inspired you and mm. inform, formed your uh, style. And then also some lessons that you can impart on people. I know, I feel like Everyone, I always make the joke. It's like, what did you move down here for directing like yeah. everyone else? A lot of people, I think, want to try their hand. And I think that there's a confidence level. But, yeah. you know, having someone that has your experience, please. Well, I've already talked about, you know, the directors that have inspired me. And because you have to uh, immerse yourself in their worlds of their films and their books and master class. So uh, Scorsese uh, gave a, a a perfect intro to his class that brought me to tears and made me realize I'm on the right path with Famish. He said, uh, "You want to write a movie uh, about uh, you want to write a movie about uh, your mother-in-law? I can't help you. You want to write a movie about this and that? I, I can't help you. But if you have to make a movie, and there's just no possible way you can live with yourself without making a movie, 
I can help you do that. You just have to, you have to live it. You have to be there. You have to be such an A type of personality. And that's for any aspect of the business. If you want to be an actor, you've got to really study hard. You know, you've got to really study as a director, the other directors and things like that. And, you know, you don't have to necessarily go to film school, you know, but your cinematographer does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it helps and, when you're not the smartest person in the room, but you work the hardest. Yes, but you also have to have the vision that everyone else is. The cinematographer is not going to say, I've got a vision for your movie. That, <laughs> that doesn't <Right>. work. <laughs> that does not work. You've got to be the driving creative force. I want this, and they go, I can make that happen. Yeah, but then, right. you know, they come to you, it's like, That's it. do you want to use this lens? Like, I mean, you, you know. This is what I tell them. I say, I want it to look like up in the air. Mm -hmm. And I go, okay, I'll get those lenses. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got go. it. <laughs> you know, and you sit down and you give them a list of the films that you are watching. And it's just, you have to be all in all the time. No one makes a movie. No, that was easy. No one says that, out, you know, after no. a movie. No one. Maybe Steven Soderbergh. No one. <laughs> even, even he's, you know, his own cinematographer. Yeah. No, no one makes a movie where it just goes so smoothly and you go, that was so relaxing. <laughs> no. It's, it takes, you know, I lost a year of my life, literally, <laughs> famous. I mean, it took me a year, but I also felt like I shaved lost. Shaved a year off. I shaved so a really year off. So really two years. Right, really, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, it's just hard. And you've got to be all in. You can't take no for an answer. And if no is the answer, you go around it. You have right. to find solutions to find your way to yes. Find your way to yes. Right. Exactly. Uh, that it just might not come the way that you thought it would. Right. So if you want to make a movie, you have no more excuses today. You don't need the greatest camera. You can use your iPhone, but you do have to structure that story to a three X structure. You have to know make the, it engaging. You just <laughs> have to know the beats of filmmaking the structure of filmmaking in terms of, you know, no audience is going there and go, that was a great plot point one. No one <laughs> knows what that is. <laughs> no one goes, oh, the first act pinch. Fantastic. No <laughs> one knows what that is. You know what I mean? <laughs> a writer will know what it is, but, uh, you know, you have to understand the beats you need to make a story enjoyable. Any story, not your story, but any story. There's a structure to it. And if you don't, if you don't understand that with every being of your creative soul, you're going to make a bad movie because you're going to, you're going to run yourself right into a brick wall story-wise. It's and, like, it's a language. Yeah. And story, well, there used to be story departments, is everything. So don't even start filming. The first day of filming, don't, don't do one frame until that story is so dead letter perfect and you've got it all. As Spielberg says, if it's not on the page, it's not on the stage. You don't have to be that strict. You could do some, you know, there's some leeway for improv. But you really, especially if time is a consideration, and every movie I know, time is a consideration. Um, you've got to have your shit together. You've got to be completely organized like the most anal person in the world. And if you're not an anal person, directing might not be for you. Yeah. <laughs> Organization, man. Yeah. Organization. <laughs> and I feel like there there is that definite like leeway. Again, it's the expectation of just like, hey, if I if I ask this, it's I'm, I'm not trying to fuck your day up. I'm just, I'm I need to, I need this. <laughs> if I have got to move in a frame, Josh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Awesome. So uh, we're nearing the end of the episode. Uh, famous. Oh, famous is. Starting to make the the con circuit. It's going to be out Starting there. January, we're going on our first tour. Finally. Yeah. That's awesome. After a pandemic and a year. Mm. Uh, so January, we're going to Albuquerque with it. Albuquerque Comic Con. That's going to be the con premiere. And uh, I referred it to Dragon Con, but they still didn't have their act together. And uh, and then we're going to Comic Con in uh, the big one in San yeah. Diego. That's awesome. In July. So... I hope you come for that. Uh, it's my, <laughs> San Diego is my hometown. So, right on. Yeah. I mean, wish I'm manifesting, not yeah. wishful thinking, manifesting. I'm, people who listen to the show, if you want to talk to your talk to talk to them. We could 
host a panel. You could do the whole thing. Fantastic. You yeah. know, I'm going to uh, rent a suite and everyone who wants to crash there can. <laughs> bring, bring sleeping bags and all that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. Food. It's going to be like a little famous dormitory. That'll be fun. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's available on Amazon Prime. It's still available on pay-per-view everywhere. Wherever you buy your movies, um, I may or may it. not have bought a copy. <laughs> I bought a and, copy. And physical copy. Uh, and yeah, it, I didn't get the physical, but I did buy uh, the digital. Uh, because of the audience, PlayStation sales do very well on pay-per-view on, through PlayStation. Oh. Uh, I know, but okay. Amazon is still prime, the king. That's prime. the market. Yeah. Well, you know why? Because all the Digimon fans are PlayStation. PlayStation. <laughs> That's why, yeah. <laughs> why? <laughs> not going to get them on Nintendo. The problem is they don't leave reviews on PlayStation, uh, and they leave uh, reviews on Amazon. Right. Uh, By the way, 73, last time I checked, 73 uh, reviews on Amazon, 72 Four or five stars. Yes. One, this movie's terrible. You know, you There's always got to be one, man. <laughs> always got to be one. And that person might be the guy that goes, there has to be one. <laughs> the same guy on our YouTube videos. It might be. Might the same guy. <laughs> I actually heard somebody say, no, that if I see that somebody something is highly rated, I got to be that one. I was like, oh, that's a thing. <laughs> Whoa, you are a terrible human. <laughs> I also say, you know, if you are if you got one hater, you're doing something right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just to tail in real quick uh, just about about directing. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, I, I just really kind of think about because I feel like right now there's this weird zeitgeist of people being like, "Oh my god," because Denny because Denny Veneuve said about Dune, he's like, "I made this film in for one audience member, and that was myself." Yeah. And I feel like to your point of just kind of like you know you're telling the story that you know you're having the human response. Yeah. That you know. I mean, you've hopefully if you're making a movie, you've seen a ton of movies and you know what you like as an audience member. So you've got to follow that, you know? Yeah, you're yeah. not making it. I mean, but the thing- Make what you want to see. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't make Dune. It's not my sensibility. Mm -hmm. I'm a bad- I would be a bad director for- Right. Just like I left Naruto. I wasn't the best director for Naruto, even though it was a big hit. Um, it, just Digimon fit my sensibility more. You, know, you understood it. You gelled with it. Right. Yeah. So, so, so this movie is my style. You know, uh, going back to Woody Allen, he makes small movies about human, the human experience. Slice of life. Yeah. Right. Um, Tarantino, I, I'm not as stylized as Tarantino, so I can't create a whole fictional world with Applejack uh, <laughs> right. um, cigarettes and all that. You know, it's not my style. Big kahuna burgers. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> um, that's not my particular style. Um, so I don't know how many movies I have in me, but they'll all pretty much be that kind of, you know, Funny, more realistic than uh, a little darker comedy. Yeah, little... right. Dark comedy is not not um so um science uh fiction or uh, special effects later. Right. No, nothing like crime that. drama. Yeah, <laughs> just just people just smile, laughing at themselves. Like, ah, that's me. You yeah, know? right, right, right. <laughs> nice, sweet, nice. Well, Jeff, as always, thank you so much for joining oh, us. Oh man, always Appreciate a pleasure. So time. fun. Uh, everybody at home, make sure to check out Famish. Um, where would you what where would you like people to follow you? Where would you like people to oh, go? Oh, I'm at Jeff Nimoy. I'm not very complicated. I'm at Jeff Nimoy wherever you go. Uh, Twitter and Instagram. Keeping and all it simple. That. But uh, you don't have to talk to me. Just watch Famish and leave a review. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna show that there. one guy. <laughs> then exactly. talk to him. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Everybody at home, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for uh, listening. If you're on your favorite podcast app. While you're there, stop by, rate and review us. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to stop by and subscribe. Uh, get these these episodes. We always do video for our episodes. Check it out. Uh, all of this stuff, all of this housekeeping can be found at nerdon.tv. All of the links, everything's there, including our full catalog of episodes. There are hundreds. And your favorite podcast app might have a limit to how much they allow there. So check it out. All the way back to episode one. So yeah. Damn. Uh, then... Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the important thing. Stop by, rate, and review. I say it every episode. I'm going to continue saying it because it's that important. <laughs> Check out that Nerd On Nation. Uh, we love the Nerd On Nation. It's a great community to be a part of. And that Discord, nerdon.tv backslash Discord, and nerdon.tv backslash Patreon. That's the housekeeping. Damn. That's it. Damn. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you. You know the drill. As always, Nerd, Nerd On! on. Ending broadcast.